Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. Now that we've checked and made sure that our game builds and runs, we're going to make a couple of changes we noticed that we didn't really see until we had gameplay going on. If you noticed, the water balls when they came out of the camera were moving really, really fast. In fact, sometimes you couldn't even pick up that they'd been shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the speed and take away the gravity on them so that they're visible, clear, and the user gets more visual feedback, knows where they're shooting, and everything just looks and flows nicer. The second thing we're going to do is we are going to reduce the force on the tank shot. The shots are moving really, really fast, and we want to make sure that the user, again, can see those. So we're going to reduce the speed so they're visible and easily identifiable. The third is you may have also noticed that if you shot a tank more than once while it was dying, then you could still get points for it. So we want to fix that as well, because that's an easy exploit that users could do to, to essentially hack the game in a small way. And that's not what we want, and it takes away from the fun. So let's start fixing those. The first thing to fix is the water ball. So let's click on our water ball prefab. And we want to go down to the rigid body. And we're going to turn off Use Gravity. It's currently checked. We want it unchecked. Then we want to go and reduce the shot force from our screen cannon. And we're going to do that in two places. First, let's go down to the script. And let's double click that to open it in our IDE. Let's change this shot force amount. Right now, it's really ridiculous. It's at 750.0F. And we really, really want to take that down by a lot. Let's try somewhere in the neighborhood of 150. And then we'll save that. And then we're going to head back to Unity. Now let's go up to where this thing lives in our current scene, which is on the main camera. So click the main camera in the hierarchy. And let's scroll down to the screen canon script. We're going to drop this shot force down to the 150 that we changed our script to. And we're going to take a look and see if that works for us. We changed it in the script first because we don't want to forget. And at least if we need to make a couple of tiny adjustments here, it's in the neighborhood of what we're looking for by default. So first things first, let's see if that fixed it. Let's press play. And let's check out how this feels and looks on our game screen. To access that, we need to go ahead and click on the AR Tabletop Kit to access our game manager. And we're just going to turn on game running so that the UI will go away. At least the starting UI will go away. And we can now shoot water balloons. All right, so that's much better. We can see the water balloons clearly. It's really easy to keep track of them. And they're new moving at a nice enough pace that the user should feel good shooting them at the tanks. And they should be fairly accurate. Perfect. Let's stop running. And we'll go ahead and handle the next thing on our list. OK, the next place we want to go is to our tank prefab. So let's go up to the game objects tank and click on the enemy tank object. And we're going to scroll all the way down to this script. And we're going to adjust this shot force. Right now it's at 15. Let's try dropping it all the way to 1. And we'll see how that looks on our screen. Press play. And then we'll select the AR tabletop kit again to get the game running. And instead of watching our main UI, let's watch these tanks and see what happens. OK, awesome. That is what we were looking for. So we'll just leave that at 1, and we'll go adjust this enemy tank script. So double click on the tank script to open it in your IDE. And we will change the shot force, which I guess we never changed from the original. It was at 1,500. So let's change that to 1. 
And before we leave this tank script, we may as well fix the other thing that we have to do here. And that is, during that time where the tanks are waiting to die, we can still hit them. And it'll give us points, and we don't really want that. How do we fix that? It's actually pretty easy. We just go ahead and add a private variable. So underneath private audio source, we're going to say private pool is dying. And this is going to be one of the easiest ways to tell whether or not the tank is dying. After is dying, we say equals false. Give it a default value. And then we scroll down to this coroutine of destroy self. And as soon as possible, so right before the audio source plays the one shot of the death sound, we can go ahead and say is dying equals true. And the way that we implement this to make sure that we can't hit it anymore is we head back up here to the on trigger enter function. And in this if statement where it says if other dot compare tag, and then it adds the projectile, we say and not is dying. So now, as long as this death boolean that is dying has not been switched to true, then it'll still go through. If it already has, then it's going to have no effect. And you know, looking at this now, we've got a bit of a problem with our code. So let's do let's do some cleanup just to follow best practices. Down here in the destroy self function, right here above this yield return new wait for seconds one, let's add a function call to another game object that we're currently making from the wrong place. Let's say game manager dot instance dot enemy hit. Now we're done in this tank section. And if we click on the waterball script, you'll notice we're making this call to game manager dot instance dot enemy hit. We really don't want that there. We only want it to deal with itself. It's called encapsulation and it's good practice. So let's take out that call since we're now doing that in the enemy itself and go back to Unity. Now that we've fixed our screen cannon, our water balls, and our tanks, it's time to go and make this game really your own. We're going to call this video good, and we'll talk more about what you can do to customize your game in the next video. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.